well, obviously the elephant in the room with LNP delivery, as we've sort of danced around here in, in, in some of these discussions is, you know, the delivery just kind of goes straight to the liver, right? We're working, you know, there's, and not that getting there has necessarily been easy either, right? But, you know, the, the hope is that we can broaden where we're actually able to deliver to. So I want to start um, Alok with you and then Russell, you know, what are some of the most promising R&D efforts that you're seeing out there today in the field or perhaps that you even yourself, right, are working on um, to improve the the deliverability of, let's say, the LNP, leaving the, the cargo out of it for a second, because mm -hmm. I want to dig into yeah. that specifically next, because that's its own uh, piece of the of the puzzle. <laughs> so, Alok, what, what's what's exciting yeah, I, you today and getting us behind beyond the liver? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, the, the uh, uh, not naming specific companies, but there are a lot of efforts yeah. out there, for example, solving cystic fibrosis, right, for lung delivery. Mm -hmm. Now, it, yep. you know, aerosol nanoparticle LNPs, but aerosolized LNPs and getting to the lung. And it's, it's a very difficult problem to solve, right? There's a mucin barrier, and mm -hmm. you got to cross that, and get to the specific cell type. And uh, so that's one. The other is, you know, in like any company that's currently working on in-situ CAR-T, right? Uh, deliver LNP with, with mRNA and the CAR encoding mRNA to the spleen, right? That's another mm -hmm. area that is pretty, uh, you know, the, the, the CAR-T CAR field is pretty established in general, right? People know mm -hmm. that it kind of works and all of that. But uh, the, the cell mobilization and all that, that's the hurdle, right? In-situ CAR-T can solve that with the LNP and redosing and all of that. So mm -hmm. the other thing that uh, it has uh, going for itself is LNPs also go to the spleen, right? So again, you know, not thinking about like people think in absolute terms, and I I would caution against that, right? So what, as you said, right, LNPs go to the liver and the spleen and a little bit to the other organs. But mm -hmm. if you can move the needle a little bit, let's say 70, 30, and it can, if you can make 60, 40, that's a pretty big advance as well, right? So mm -hmm. it's not... Don't think in absolute terms. Like you're not going to get zero in liver and 100% in spleen. You know, it, it's going to take time, right? But yes. that's yeah. just one example that I highlighted, right? Where the field will mm -hmm. grow outside of the liver, right? Because you have a field okay. that's already established, and now you have targets to go after. And you know, now mm -hmm. the ask is, well, can you get into the T cells in the spleen? And it's a more achievable target, right? Because they do go there. You just have to do a little mm -hmm. tinkering to get more, and you know, and then develop it into a product. So yeah, you know, that, absolutely. Again, I, yeah, yeah. It's it's nothing is absolute when it comes to LME. They they yeah. will distribute. It's it's just a, it's like any other small molecule. It will go everywhere, right? It, uh, but the ratios matter, and that's what start, will mm. drive the the PK and the talks and all of that, right? That's mm -hmm. that's what will end up. Yeah, working. something will have favorable profile, and that will end up working in the end. Incremental advancement, right? Incremental, <laughs> shifting that needle just slightly here and there, and that's a big advance. Russell, what about you? Where you, where do you fall in terms of some of the most promising R and D efforts? Are you thinking similarly to Lok on the therapeutic side in terms of you know how we how we get beyond the liver incrementally? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I think there's actually a lot of really, really exciting work that's coming out. I mean, you have you have people really on the forefront, right? And and really some some seminal works from uh, James Dahlman and and um, and uh, uh, Phil Seward and um, Dan Anderson that, that really look interesting, right? And and there's there's many many more that you can talk about. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, this is an area where where I think delivery scientists have got to shine um, because mm -hmm. ultimately it, it becomes uh, a question of physiological barriers that um, that that are dealt with from a material standpoint that, that that give us the traction that we need, right? And it's a it's a it's a big question, a really tough ask. Um, but but that being said. Um, you know, I think I think we we will make advancement. I, I think the the papers that I, I get really excited about are, are generally not empirical. Like they, they they provide some 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 detailed analysis on on what is happening and what the kind of the characteristic of the delivery vehicle really is. Um, and and those are are forthcoming, right? And then I think on the other side, we're really understanding. I think 
you know, in, within the next few months, we'll see more publications that, that begin to uh, un unravel key safety questions, right? And once we understand those safety questions, we, we will be able to more directly deal with them. Um, but that's that's a case where, where we need more information and we need to really have key mechanistic um, data to really support in directions that we would move forward with. Absolutely. And I want to jump too into the cargo piece of this, because I know that that's a really critical uh, portion of, of how we get this, the mRNA to where it needs to go. And so, Russell, I, I want to just start with you. And this actually may be our closing question. We've got seven minutes, but it'll depend on how long you guys go. So mm -hmm. in terms of <laughs> so in terms of thinking, you know, moving beyond the liver, we have to think incrementally, but also play around with our cargo, right? And one of the comments that was uh, made uh, in, a, in a, uh, a session that you had chaired at a, at a recent conference was, we're barely scratching the surface, right, of what all we can actually do to that cargo. So can you help flesh out for us a little bit about why we're only just scratching the surface, right? What are some of the things that, that you're watching, right, that, and that the industry really should be doing um, today to, to, to put a, a more yeah. um, focused look right into their cargo. Yeah, so that, that comment came from Nano from on the island, right? And he's he's almost like the godfather of, of SRNA <laughs> in some way, right? Yeah. I mean, not, but he's also a great guy. Um, he's also, you know, just a, a real expert in the field. So, and his comment was was basically when the, the, on the onset, when they were beginning to do the explorations around SRNA, really they began to look at, at um, base modifications as, and, and um, backbone modifications of, of RNA to, to really provide a runway for making a, an effective payload. And so have we done that for mRNA therapeutics or vaccines? The answer is mm. kind of not really, right? Um, <laughs> you, know, you're, you talk about really five modifications that dominate mRNA construction, right? And, uh, and and those are all related to bases and typically drive for, you know, um, a, a, a better tolerated payload, right? Something that doesn't stimulate innate responses. Uh, so, so what can we look forward in that direction? Um, so so from, from my standpoint, you know, increasing stability, it's not really clear how, how you can integrate uh, modifications of, of uh, backbone and bases that really give you more product stability and also longer and more durable mRNAs, right? So those types of things are really, it would be very, very interesting to answer. And, and uh, you know, and there's a wide space. It's just uh, that you need to kind of fold in the way that mRNA is working. And it's much, I think it's it's a little bit harder to, to, to easily discern than, than the sRNA and risk complex mechanisms or, or the ASOs, right, that, that many people work on. So I think it's a, it's, it's a complicated, but it's a, a very worthwhile question. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I think I think there's a ways to go. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the way it impacts deliveries is, is you know, we'll, we'll realize it when we really start digging in those directions. Alok, yeah, what, what would you add? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would point, you know, I, I would agree with Russell, there's a lot more to go, but but any change or any advances uh, that, that will give you a long, like a step forward increase, right, will be mm -hmm. what drives the field forward. For instance, uh, N1 methyl pseudo U, right, uh, instead of uracil. Uh, mm -hmm. And I would just point for people who are unaware, right, I mean, that, I, my belief is that that's what made the vaccines kind of feasible, right? Uh, with the NIH mm -hmm. yeah. immune response and all that. Yeah. So that's one example, right? I mean, if more like that is still to be discovered, how you make it more mm -hmm. potent. And you know, like if you think about it, it's the same construct except for the base and only one uracil was changed. It's, well, uracils across the board were changed for animal methyl, right? And that give, gives you a, a lot more potent mRNA when it comes to endosomal escape and all of those characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, uh, there are other things that people have pointed to, you know, double stranded RNA and the way RNA folds, as Russell pointed, right? Secondary structure, how do you control that? Uh, how does secondary structure affect protein production? You know, those are the, they're still out there to be explored, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it'll, those questions will get more and more traction. And again, what I would close on is these things. 
the way LNP, the field of LNP evolved, right? LN, in the field of LNP is pretty well known. In vitro, in vivo correlation is very poor, right? In fact, it leads mm -hmm. you the other way. Uh, so, yeah. you know, you need in vivo systems uh, <laughs> to drive that <laughs> with, with mRNA, right? You will need the right models. And the right the right models will be, you know, now we know what works in a human being, right? And people mm -hmm. will trace back and say, okay, well, this predicts this. So now how are we, mm -hmm. we build more of these models so that there's more success instead of failures? Right? So, Whose responsibility is it to build the models? I mean, where do we get better models? Is it all the industry? Uh, is it the supply chain? How do we get better models in terms of understanding where we're going or need I to go? I believe it, it has to be a partnership uh, mm -hmm. uh, between you know the the service providers and the industry because ultimately you need the relevant data, which mm -hmm. the the companies who are developing the product, the therapeutic companies or the vaccine companies will have the access to the data. Right? You can build a model, but you need to say whether that model is working or not, and for that you need access to the clinical mm -hmm. data. So the two have yep. to marry, and the, the therapeutic companies don't really have much interest in developing mm -hmm. the model. They just go run with the model, whatever works, <laughs> and then move forward. Right? And yeah. They yeah. don't want to be a service provider, is what I'm trying to say, right? Mm -hmm. So it ultimately, yeah. it's, a, it's a give and take between the two. Yeah. yeah. Russell, do you have any closing thoughts in terms of, you know, if you had a crystal ball, right, and, and we had better models, right, that would be one thing. What would be something else that we should be looking out for and as an industry striving to, to do over the course of the next year to, to best improve deliverability of, of mRNA? Uh, great question, and uh, um, and and as kind of a clear remark, maybe this is this is a great one to you know it's it's kind of the perspective as well. So uh, I think I think in general, um, you know, there's just a lot of work to be done. I think partnerships are, are really going to be driving this forward, and and we need you know the delivery, you know, science is you know to to just continue growing right, and and our capability, and and we're finally kind of out of the niche area, right? We're now kind of playing a really significant role, which was always the case. It's just now it's on the forefront. So I'm excited to be there and, and I'm really looking forward in the next you know years uh, to see major advancements move things forward.